start. And we have this last short lecture by Cecile, um, which will uh, speak us about another life of St. Benedict, also sculpted, uh, just in order to have the point of comparison before to go to the church. And um, the, I think it will be said to, the, to our audience is that uh, we will not film our walking into the basilica, but we will make a short, uh, short like movie later in order to get some some images and pictures, some shots from the basilica as well as some general comments about the location and so on. So we can start. Okay. A very different choice governed the sitting into, into sign of the Vita of, Bono, of Benedict in the crypt of the Basilica of Saint-Denis. The crypt belongs to the construction campaign decided in 1135 by the Abbot Suger to justify of the importance of the Royal Abbey. The construction of the bedside or sanctuary was completed in 1144, um, 1 June, June uh, 11th, date of the dedication of the altar of the new crypt and that of the uh, abside or, um, or uh, sanctuary. However, the carved decoration of the crypt probably carried the brand of the brilliant project superintendent. Composed initially of about 60 capital, it is partially lacunar today because of the destruction and degradation of the 18th centuries. century. If the image of Benoit, father of the Western monachism, testify of the devotion who is the subject of in the Benedictine Abbey, they especially made possible for its silent partner or conceptor to use the legend of the saint to the service of his own speech. Among the 38 still exciting, exciting uh, hist historiates capital of the Christ, seven capitals would illustrate episodes of the life of the father of the monks. In a major article, Pamela Z. Bloom was the first to identify the, the scenes with would compose the cycle. Most of this capital being more or less deteriorated, she did not seek to interpret them. Having focused it uh, on the identification of the capitals, she neither wondered about the general direction for the cycle nor on the narrative method employed. However, she tried to connect the cycle of the Benedict to the image, images of the other capitals of the crypt, which represents an innovating methodological approach in himself for this period, the beginning of the, uh, the 18th. To facilitate the explanation of the capitals, we decide to follow the chronological courses of the legends. Thus, the scene which opens the cycle in Saint-Denis is the one of the miracle of the save, first miracle of Benedict. In Afida, the nurse, you know now the story of the youth young saint dropped uh, a thief that broke, but Benoit collected the two pieces of the thief, carried them away with him and broke into prior and tears. One on the faces of the capital, the saint in prior is almost bowed down under the twist, twisted uh, arc. On the left side of the basket, a concave and grooved object is suspended from an arcade in accordance, a kind of baldaquin. It is a votive representation of the sieve entirely restored by the prior of Benoit, of Benedict. Sorry. Uh, Gregory reports in the Vita that all the, the country was so aware of the wonder. The villagers suspended the sieve from the porch of the church. Thus, they could see it, them and all their descendants, the grace of God in the religious life of Benedict, this child, what a perfection for the beginning for many years 
everyone could see the sieve, and it remained suspended above the door of the church until those time of the Lombardic invasion, said Gregory. Here, the composition is reduced said, to, to its most simple expression. The sieve is illustrated like an ex voto as the irrefutable sign of the holiness of Benedict, who, on the other cap face of the capital, in a prior, is turned in the direction of the suspended, suspend, um, un, un, uh, suspended sieve. Suspended sieve. The representation of the prior alone is enough to explain the realization of the miracle was indeniable, indeniable proof is simply presented on the other face of the basket. The arcades illustrated one the two faces of the capital confer to the represented space a unity, that of the pertaining worship building in which the prior becomes efficient. The complete lake of narration is particularly attentive in the composition of this scene of miracle. The nurse, essential, essential character, character to understand the episode, is not evoked. The broken save does not appear. Not anecdotic elements allows an unquestionable identification of this capital. The narrative matter does not interest the originator, the creator of the image, who choose, who, who choose to show an image of mediation of pure prior, but not mentioning any historical detail. Only the ex voto point points out the object of the prior and the realization of the miracle, so that the two images appear like a synthesis of the Christian concept of miracle. By this economy of means, they put in parallel the prior of the saint, which, like those on the faithful, we must have the church as a framework. framework pardon. In addition, the ex voto still reinforces the, links, the link by materializing and symbolizing the prior heard by God. It is not a question of illustrating the miracle carried out but the scent, by the scent, but of evoking the daily miracle related bar, uh, to uh, a heard prayer. The images reach here a high degree of abstraction, relatively rare in the hagiographic agi icono iconography. The second capital evokes the period when the saint remained in Subiaco. One on, on one of the faces of the capital, a monk addressed to a smiler character, also, also aureolate, but dressed in a short tunic and holding a stick. This scene reports a meeting of the young Benedicts and the smile size of the character and of the monks Romain. According to the text of Gregory, Will Benoit, in escape, was passing by there, Subiaco, a certain monk named Roman, found him on, on his way and asked him what he saw. The Cenobites has just left his monastery, symbolized by the a door in semicircular arc surmounted by a pediment, and moved towards Beno Benedict, whose peregrina peregrination since Afida is, reve is revealed by his stick. Romain designates Benedict or the following scene showing Benedict in the cave where he has withdrawn for three, three years. The gesture of the monks undoubtedly undu undu suggests implicitly the monastic nomination of Benedict, or more precisely, the rupture with the world that is induced by the conversio. It is by the er eremitic experiment that Benedict will endorse, will make the dress of the holy life transmitted by Roman his own. Therefore, 
the, therefore, the dress of the holy life, according to the expression of Gregory, makes above all the interior conversio materialized by the cave shown by Roman. The clothing, traditionally used to express the passage of the state to another, is completely isolated from the images. Only the monastic tonsure, tonsure testify of the taking of the clothes in the second image of the capital. Benedict, Benedict's tonsured and aureoled emerge from a cave made of the superposed block that form a kind of basket. The creator of the images sought to, to retranscribe the idea of reclusion plastically. The rocky cluster enclosed the body of the monk who disappeared who disappeared. It literally forms a unit with a cave that surrounds him, that wraps him in the manner of the monastic dress taken intentionally away from the two scenes. The inclusion of the body of Benedict in the cave symbolizes his rupture with the world. The new hagiographical, no parti particularly well, the text of the Vita, since he liked Gregory's plays with the sense of the word, words to reinforce the association clothing cave. If the, the author of the legend specifies indeed the narrowness of the cave, he employs especially the verb tradere to evoke the taking of the clothes and the entry in the cave. Thus, it is thanks to experiments the, of the desert that the father of the monks will be able to take the lead of a religious community and to organize its life. On his way, the fugitive was met by a monk named Romain who asked him where he was going. When he was aware of the desire, Romain knew how to be discreet and helpful. He gave him the dress of the holy life and helped it the best he could. Once arrived at the destination, the man of God put himself in a cave. He was cramped. He remained there three years and no to the main, to the mean, save for the monks Romain. The narrative dimension of the Vita is not the principal matter of the creator of the images. However, he concedes a few details that makes it possible to establish without ambiguity the identification of this episode. A chord from a basis of the Nimbus of Benedict in the first term is connected to a plaid and goes down towards the toward his retreat sanctuary. A bread bowl or the rune loaf and a small belt are attached to it. The episode of the small belt broken by the demon is slightly outlined. Here, the detail of the small belt is important, not like an anecdotic element to support the narration, but because it records the fight of Benedict against the devil. Thus, only the concept of retreat in the desert was retained. The fights and temptations irremediably associated with the retreat not being described, it, um, described here. The complete lake of narrative matter explains what before the study of Pamela Z. Bloom, these images escaped the identification. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, for the same reasons also, the identification of the sense requires great caution. It's fabulous, that. Yeah. The third capitals would, would then be a representation of Benedict in bust in, in his oratory of the Mont Cassin. is represented. He appears in monastic clothes closed in a church, flanked by side hills, situated on the hill-lock rubble. 
the Vita specifies that the borough that all what that own calls Cassin is located on the side of the of a height mountain that digs its size to receive it, then rise on the three miles, stretching, extending perhaps its peak toward the sky. The sun astonate is there to destroy a tomb, a temple dedicated to Apollo, to Apollo, and to set fire. Uh, to the pagan's sacred wood. On the side of the pagan temple, in the temple of Apollo, the Vita stipulate, he established an oratory in honor of Saint Martin et, and a second one dedicated to Saint John. The concept of the cycle, however, miserly of details, took care to show the building perched on the rocky masses of the Monte Cassino. As Benedict is, is not holding his stick, we can assume that is not the abbey that is represented here, but the oratory, Saint Martin or Saint John Chapel. These images such show the immediate, the immediate installation of the saint after his destruction of the places of pagan worship. The analysis of the work of the concept of the images does not authorize to consider the, the trees without the sinew trunk and the palm leaves that is illustrate on the right side of the building as a purely decorative element or showing the natural environment of the Monte Cassino. Not without reason, Pamela Z. Bloom thinks that it could be the bed tree attribute of Apollo that was always planted in the sacred enclosure of the temple. The trees or the vegetation covered on the other face of the basket could also evo evoke the sacred wood of the demon that the, that the saint set fire to after having destroyed the idol and knocked the altar over. Taking again the composition of the image of the calf, the oratory closely fits the body of Benedict. The folds of the monastic clothing end up merging with the rock, which are used as the base of the oratory. Benedict's unites with, with its foundation, his effigy, effigy, which fills up the entire building can be assimilated to the building itself. Thus, the image is made metaphor. The saint is represented as the supporting stone of the church. In the ambition of the creator of the cycle to reduce the narrative dimension of the legend to the profit of a definition of the monachism. It seems to us that our image also suggests the establish of the true face on the Monte Cassino. In other words, it would incarnate the first steps of the monastic life, the establishment in a hostile environment of the true face, but also of the true life, the monastic life. It precedes the celestial life of the angels. This episode, this episode of the life of Benedict and, in a certain manner, the this capital rec recall the saisism of Jerusalem by David. David settles, settled in the fortress and called it city of David. Then David built a wall around it since the middle towards the interior. David was growing and Yahweh was with him. David inaugurated his reign on all of Israel by seizing the fortress of Sion, which was in the ends of Jebusian. I don't know in English. With this important act, David appears as a true founder of the founder of the kingdom of Jerusalem, of Israel. Sorry. The sense seems indeed following the example of David, behind being uh, hidden away in the building and having taken fully possession of the space. It, 
It is thus the triumphing image of a founder, of the builder of the Benedictine order, which is given to us, but also the one of the vigilance father dominating the space of the building in which is, it is strictly circumscribed circ bed. If the evocation of the foundation is in the middle of this image, the idea of a closet world is also interlined. This episode of the Vita be be became the pretext to show the founder of the order in a building, symbol of the monarchism. In the fourth capital is relatively degraded. <laughs> relatively. The, the legibility of the scene allows, however, a quite certain identification. On the left side of the capital, four monks. You see? Okay. Mm. Okay. Four monks <laughs> gathered two by two and superimposed, seen forbidden and stopped in their action. One of them still holds his working tool in his hand, a kind of uh, shovel or, sp or spade. At the angle of the capital, in a posture of a sitting animal, an imposing ornate demon seems to wait with all his weight on the enormous block of stone. These details prove that the sculpture a geographical knew perfectly how to handle the uh, narrative expression. On the central face of the Capitol, Saint Benedict, represented in his capacity as habit, makes a gesture of blessing. The episode reported here is that of, a mira that of the miracle of the stone during the construction of the monastery. According to Gregory, one the building side, a large stone, that they, monks, wanted to leave to set it up. With two or three of them, they could not move it. Several others came to the rescue, but it did, did not move, clearly giving to understand that the antique enemy in person had sat above. The saint is called and puts himself in a prayer that he blesses and the stone is lift without difficulty. These images evoke the spiritual fight that Benedict carried out during the establishment of the true faith. It is presented there like a father of the monk fighting to set up the monachism, monachism symbolized by his action and his founding mission. The deterioration of the following capitals belonging to the cycle is just that, that certain scenes are almost no more readable. However, it was identified like um, the miracle of ailing a young monk, a child, wounded by the fall of the wall. On the western side of the capital, at the left end, a monk is building a wall, a wall while a demon is standing near the construction. On the central face of the basket, the demon makes the wall to collapse, leading to the fall, at first, of the young monks. The young monk. The, the narration continues at the angle and on the eastern side of the capital. The holy abbot is represented behind a character laying on the ground, leg slightly folded up. Yeah. It is the young monk, the young monk seriously wounded by the collapse of the wall. Four, four other extremely degraded characters attend the scene, probably the monks who brought the inanimate body near Benedict. Above the saint, the saint, the end of God, appears, appear, announcing the miracle of healing. 
these two capitals represent the spiritual combat, the spiritual fight, and the victories of Benedict during the construction of the monastery of Mont Cassino. The <coughs> creator of images choose to represent two or three episodes reporting the attacks of the antique enemy, enemy at the time of the foundation of the famous abbey. They are besides um, the only images that have a clearly defined narrative intention since the various protagonists of the scene are illustrated and allow its understanding. In addition, the capital of the, hail, the hailing of the monk is the only one to offer a narrative continuity in several sequences. The introduction with the demon which appears during the construction of the wall, then the fall of the monk uh, caused by the devil, and finally the miraculous conclusion due, due to intervention of Benedict. If the composition of these images of miracle were thought according to the narrative matter, that, exclude, uh, es that excludes the symbolic matter by no means. The, the fight of Benedict evokes perhaps also the fight of the Benedictine order against the attacks and the vicissitudes of the, of the world. It seems obvious that the creator of the cycle wanted to incise uh, on the founding action of Benedict, subjects of three of the seven capitals of the cycle in a, Christ, in a crypt. The sixth capital illustrates illustrate the meeting of Totila and Benedict. The saint is sat on the habit throne in the front top of the habit with the king of, uh, of pa uh, Pagan bowed down is in prayer in front of him. The, the scene seems to support the crown head and if inviting Totila to stand. The four men was composed Totila's part is stand behind. The lack of narrative details reinforce um, the impression of the homage of a king to an enthroned abbey. This is why we are tempted to admit that the episode of the legend of Benedict becomes the occasion to work out an image much, much more general of a king who paid homage to a monk. The image of Saint Benoît sur Loire showing the same episode of the Vita locates the action in its context, in particular by the presence of Rigo, still dressed in the royal robes. In Saint-Denis, none of the members of the royal suite is particularly distinguished. If a homage of the feudal vassalic type is represented in Fleury, the image remains nevertheless within the family of the legions even, if its meaning largely excited it. In reality, the matter of the image of the crypt is specified when one knows the personality of sujet and the role of Saint-Denis beside the kings of France. The abiographic image is voluntarily taken off the limits of the legend to serve the speech of the abbé, constructeur, sujet, in a given political and social context. The seventh capital of the cycle likes narrative element to be identified with certainty, clearly. In front of an abbot, Hieratic, sat on his throne, stands a man whose hands some seems united by a link. It is followed by the character whose head has disappeared himself, preceded by two other men. Mean. One facing out, rolled up in a coat, and another from side on. This scene was identified as an episode of Benedict and the captive of the Aryan Zala. 
indeed, the position of the abbot and the attitude of the character who seems to have the anti accredit this hypothesis. However, the two characters represented behind the one who would push the peasant are enigmatic. Pamela Zedblom only saw one of them and says that is the continuation of the of the god of the Aryan. However, as the Vita does not mention any troop following the Aryan Zala, it is always represented alone in the monumental images and, on, and the miniature illustrating this episode. It is true also that the geographic image are sometimes very free interpretation of the sources from which they result since they are the fruit of the adaptation of a sometimes several centuries old vita. The identification is delicate here because of the presence of the facing out character at the northern end of the basket. If he is supposed to belong a to a continuation, it is clearly detached by his position and it is emphasized. In the case of the court of Totila is illustrated in, a sixth, in the sixth capital, all of his companions are carved side on or three quarter, thus taking part in the action. The identification of the scene of the seventh capital, thus remain hypothetical even if the abbot and the prisoner undoubtedly remain of the confrontation of Benedict and Zala, as well as due to the miracle of the release. If such were the case, the, se the scene would pr primarily illustrate uh, the arrival of Zala and, the and of the peasant in front of the abbot before the miracle, but the prisoner being practically in contact with a, the saint, the miracle is imminent. If the choice of the illustration of the episode, it is not once again the miracle which is privileged, but the moment which preceded it. Thus, what was most significant, therefore most dramatic, was not retained in this event. The creator of image used this episode to the same ends as the ones of the homage of Totila. His approach of the legend is similar. He makes, a uh, he makes of a narrative image in theory special, reporting one precise moment of the life of the saint, a general image which evoke above all the justice of the abbot. A hydrate character bruised by a group of men, appears before an abbot. In the crypt of Saint-Denis, the episode of the life of the saint arises either as abstraction or like general information. In the Saint-Benoît-sur-Loire, all the episodes are not inevitably broken up into two or three narrative sequences. The concept of image can also be more synthetic by summarizing in only one image, one image, an episode of the accounts. Yet, uh, this, um, this kind of uh, images is not cut down by any details that would take away its comprehension and its clarity. It forms a kind of summary, summary of the history, but the essence is there. The singularity of the cycle of Saint-Denis is probably due to the personality of its creator, Surgé. The sense with he shows focus on the activity of the builder Benedict. However, this insistence is rather typical of the establishment that claim famous funding document. These references have less, have less justification in Saint-Denis as it is as not a foundation of Benoit, of Benedict. Pardon. However, the activity of the father of the monks can undoubtedly be put in parallel with the proper enthusiastic construction of sujet. 
the extent of the works is undertook fines and doubly a king of a kind of legitimation will being based on the rule of builder of Benedict, founder of the order. It's, it seems to us that the exceptional personality of Suger invites to this kind of hypothesis. I would not to see in this image a projection of, his, of the own activity, own aspirations of the abbot of Saint-Denis through the life of the famous founder of the order to which he belongs. Benedict is introduced as a builder who, fast the who faces the evil to found his monastery and in more general way to found, to found the uh, Benedictine order. Perhaps these difficulties echo those met by Suger during the vast construction work of the Abbey. The abbot was the object of criticism, of criticism, which led him to justify himself in particular theo theologically. Perhaps the vicissitudes met by, by Benedict at the time of his activity as a constructor have for the abbot of Saint-Denis a completely contemporary resonance. However, in spite of the fight to be carried out, the victory is celebrated by, by the image of the capital. The image representing the meeting of Totila and Benoit is stripped of, of any anecdotic reference which would particularize, particularize, oh, un, deux, trois, particularize it and is reduced to the homage of the king to an abbot. Is, is this also an illusion to the proper role of, of Suger, the abbot of Saint-Denis, beside the king of France, perhaps? Sur, Suger wanted to be and was the adversary of the king of France. Wouldn't this imagine even illustrate the definition of God government? According to Suger, the spiritual power guiding the temporal power. The function of Suger near the kings of France as that of the abbey within the kingdom are not foreign to the choice and the structure of the illustrated scene. The creator of the cycle incites on the role of the abbot more than on the personality of the son who inspires. Thus, the mission of the abbot is is an um, exhilarated builder, founder, spiritual guide of the temporal power, impartial judge and rigorous. The legend of Benedict is not used completely for itself. In fact, it is a function of the habit of Saint-Denis that are probably seen under the prism of the Vita of Benoit. Thus, the, the, the images of the life of Benedict legitimate, give weight to the functions of the abbot of Saint-Denis and guarantee his role of builder. The hagiographic cycle of Saint-Denis does not use the legend of Benedict, of Saint Benedict as, the, as an end, but as a mean, means for sujet to define his own role being based on the life of the father of the Western monarchism. According to its structure, its various patterns on its confrontation with the other sequences which compose the cycle, the hagiographic image has, has either an undeniable narrative nature or a more abstraction, abstract intention. The visual implementation of the episode can, can on its own, testify of, the, of this bias or the overall composition, fighting, just opposition of the imagine, and that confers to the cycle its, its own tone. Anyhow, the great plasticity of the hagiographic image sees, gives the opportunity of an infinite variety of visual speeches.
start. No questions for now? Okay, no, for me, what's really, uh, I have one really naive question, which is um, if we have any notices of the fact that in the crypt of Saint Denis they were relics of Saint Benoit or Benedict, were they relics or not? Because that would be. Not. We haven't, I mean. Alors. Il fait, il fait euh, Saint de, euh, sujet fait venir énormément de reliques quand il consacre oui. euh, justement les, les, euh, les hôtels, les hôtels de, de la crypte. À ma connaissance, mais là je dis peut-être une, une erreur, je n'ai pas relevé de mention de reliques de Benoît. Mm. Mais peut-être que je n'ai pas vu, hein, parce que c'est très très long, hein, les, la cérémonie. Peut-être qu'à l'époque, c'est un vieux dossier. Mmh. Et, euh, et à l'époque, j'ai peut-être pas vu, mais je n'ai pas, enfin, je, je pas trouvé. Voilà. Mmh. So no, no mention about the relics of Saint Benoît, mmh. even though they are. Because it's really interesting um, to imagine that in the crypt, so in the lower part of the church, we already spo have spoken oui. about the roots, and so there is once more Benedict, this time invisible for the audience outside. But th and th the second interesting aspect is that in Saint Benoit the cycle is invisible for the normal viewer, but in in Saint Denis the crypt is accessible and uh, the upper part not. Mm. So this time ben Benedict is visible and what's up uh, what's on the first floor is invisible. So different position. But then my second question is that I mean considered the level of conservation of the cycle, some. Same of the scenes are really like, well, we have to believe more than to see. Mm -hmm. And not really. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Quand, quand on voit les. les, les moi j'ai travaillé sur place. Hein, oui. Quand on voit les, les, les chapiteaux, on voit les choses. Hein, parce que les reliefs sont suffisamment profonds encore pour qu'on qu voit bien les choses. La seule chose, c'est que mes photographies. Ce sont mes photographies. <rire> Écrase complètement, euh, notamment pour les, les images les plus abîmées, hein, celles qui ont été touchées, celles que. Euh, Écrase les reliefs. Mais quand on est devant, on voit. On voit. Alors, je ne vous ai pas fait les petits relevés, comme j'avais fait pour l'autre, mais j'aurais pu. Non, mais c'est plus visible que les photographies qui sont. Make it better so less visible. Mm. Okay. Le plus problématique en fait dans, dans ce... oui quoi que celui-ci non parce qu'il y a quand même ce corps qui est posé au pied de l'abbé donc mm. ça ça ça. Est même, on voit presque pas ce... Oui il est là si si euh, attendez sinon PowerPoint accepte voilà en fait on, on voit on voit assez bien hein, quand euh, euh, alors j'ai pas les trois faces donc il manque il manque la face euh, que je vous ai décrit mais on voit euh, le démon hein, qui, qui est très nettement représenté et puis le corps le corps du moine se distingue vous voyez il est il est vraiment sur un axe oblique ici j'avais mis une petite flèche parce que j'étais voilà, je savais que ce serait difficile à, à observer mais bon celle-ci me semble pas problématique et puis l'abbé est bien représenté euh, au-dessus du corps mmh. donc c'est un miracle euh, voilà de, de guérison de résurrection etc là où c'est plus compliqué c'est pour celle où vraiment genre ça où il n'y a aucun élément aucun détail narratif qui raccroche à la légende mmh. donc ça devient un propos très général yeah, someone I'm reading this one is almost well you have no objective elements mm. and what's also interesting that we really see how the, the legend is used and reused mm. so here is Amber we have a certain use of the same story and uh, we have a completely other one here and of course well you know Herb Kessler has, has written several times about um, Abbé that he's the most uh, famous conceptual artist of the yeah. Middle Ages. Yeah. And it's right that his self-promotion is so close to the 21st yeah. century that it's something like yeah. he's really everywhere and promoting himself. Uh, I, will have, if, uh, I wanted to compare him to Milo Moray, I will not do it, but <laughs> there is this idea of like really uh, promoting the image of the art everywhere. Mm. Mm. Do we have any questions? I feel you are a bit sleeping because of the lunch, my dears. <laughs> Maybe it's not such a good idea to get wine each time on lunch. <laughs> 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 um, 
Okay, no question. No. Um, yeah? I maybe have a question. If you can see in the cycle some comparison, like mm, like close comparison or like um, really conscious comparison with the cycle or some iconography in Saint Benoit, because I don't know if it's. I'm not sure if I'm clear or if it makes sense, but uh, you know when we are like taking cycle of Saint Benedict. You are maybe just looking on the place where the uh, where the bones are or where the relics mm -hmm. are, mm. or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say. No, I would say no. No, but it question. doesn't seem to me really. But no. no, no. I was just thinking we were talking about the previous uh, cycle that it could have been mentioned as like. Uh, kind of meditation space for the mm. novels. But this is like a different purpose. Of course. Like yeah. also with the, the kind of how, how the scenes are like presented more mm. more like explicit. I don't know if you can say, I don't know. But what was the Sabine's question is, is that uh, if there is an official version mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the life, I would say definitely not. No. Mm. We are using, I mean, each occasion is good to create a new one. Mm. And it's interesting because we are still in the, well, uh, I would say that we are a bit uh, determined by Giotto. We have always in mind that there is mm -hmm. one legend of San Francisco which is applied everywhere. But no, there is not mm -hmm. such a powerful construction which has to be imitated. And even those manuscripts, you show us the, the manuscript of Monte Cassino, made by Desiderius. Are also maybe s these iconographies used, or it was just really developed? Um, C'est um, plus développé, bien sûr, hein, dans, dans le manuscrit du mm -hmm. Montcassin, que j'ai pas étudié, hein, euh, puisque dans, dans le cas de, de, du travail que je viens de vous présenter, qui est un peu ancien maintenant, c'était je travaillais sur l'art monumental essentiellement, donc euh, je, je convoquais euh, les, les images des manuscrits, euh, mais je ne travaillais pas sur euh, sur les sur les, les cycles peints dans les manuscrits. Mm -hmm. Donc c'est un travail qu'il faudrait mener. C'est-à-dire qu'en réalité, euh, aujourd'hui, il faudrait reprendre le, donier, le, le dossier sur Saint-Benoît mm -hmm. et réétudier et analyser euh, la construction mm -hmm. agiographique, euh, mm -hmm. œuvre par œuvre, c'est-à-dire euh, lieu par lieu. C'est ce qu'elle a fait dans systématique way, parce qu'elle était en train de monumental sculpture. Mm -hmm. Uh, and at that time she didn't study like quickly this manuscript but mm. also the other but it's something which could be done mm. I mean the, the, the construction of the hagiographical mm. story of Benedict or the different stories and I would say that be a nice a nice topic for oh, yes. a, a no mm. maybe mm. I don't know if a PhD but something which is quite larger because in general this question of development of the hagiographical story starts very late mm -hmm. the first stories which we know like complete one are well on one hand, the Bernensis, for example, where the martyrdom, uh, this 9th century manuscript concerned in Switzerland. There is the life of Ambrose, 9th century. But it's really something which arrives at a certain point, um, and uh, we don't really know how mm. <laughs> it was developed. Or we have, of course, a um, person who studied it, but it's a topic which is quite interesting. How do you construct the images? Uh, with a big important text on the on the back because all those stories, part of them are starting with a written text, mm -hmm. books about the saints at a certain point there is the necessity to construct the images mm -hmm. for the text. Mm -hmm. It's a bit what we are doing with our movies. We have often an idea, well not all of us, but some of us have the idea and then we are using images to illustrate the idea and it's uh, like a very interesting proceeding to the construction of the, of the visual material mm -hmm. because you have first the book and then you are searching for illustrations, let's say. Mm -hmm. And That's then, true. of course, as we saw here in Saint-Denis, uh, well, Sujet is not exactly the person who will, like, make all the illustrations. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also have the substract of abstract of oral tradition and of other... Yeah, the iconographies, which then mix everything up. Yeah, maybe, maybe because the, the workshop receives the... well. The order, please make this live. There's the story, but they will use their visual mm. tools and their visual experience, and some sometimes also. And what about the oral traditions? Oral traditions, traditions before the, I don't know. Or see, how well, I studied it for the case of Saint Ambro mm. Ambrose, where mm, it seems evident that the main reference is the written text. Yes, 
really the Vita, the official one. On the other hand, uh, we know from the Anonymous of San Gal and who like wrote uh, the second Vita, I would say nine, uh, end of ninth century, that uh, many stories were circulating because he really wrote, oh, there are many stories of the life of the saint Fabros. I will start with the important one of Paulinus, so he's quoting the written one, but other stories are there. So you have also the Nebulosa, but I think there is something in the Christianity which is always uh, linked to the, let's say, the original text. You have the four Gospels and the, the Apocryphy. They exist, but mm-hmm. there is the original and then, I mean, the, the most three stories. So the oral tradition is quite important, but because yeah, in the case of the big saints, I will agree, but in the case of the smaller saints, you see already that yeah. the confusion can be created much quicker yeah. if there is, especially if there is no no vita until a later date. There are cases probably where we have images before having any trace of the war text or of the original text. I don't, mm-hmm. know. I don't know any exactly, but mm-hmm. maybe. Alors, les seules références qui, enfin, j'ai deux choses qui me viennent à l'esprit. La première, c'est que je, je, enfin, la tradition orale, pour les vies, et surtout pour les vies de saints aussi prestigieux, à mon avis, c'est compliqué. En revanche, ce qu'on peut voir, c'est euh, parfois, on voit arriver des vies qui, qui ont été écrites, je pense notamment des saints orientaux, donc qui sont ensuite traduites euh, et qui arrivent euh, en Europe, et puis on voit une diffusion euh, après. Mais ce qui peut arriver quand on a... Bah, par exemple, je pense à Souillac. Je ne sais pas si vous avez eu la chance d'aller euh, à Souillac. Non. Donc il y a un relief qui s'appelle le relief de Théophile. Et euh, sur ce relief de Théophile, il y a les deux rencontres avec le diable. Oui, oui vous avez le cours. Oui. oui. Et, et, et justement, euh, dans la, la vie, euh, enfin dans la légende telle qu'elle arrive et qui est traduite, il est fait mention de la rencontre avec le diable. Hein, donc Théophile passe un pacte avec le diable. Et donc dans la scène de Souillac, enfin, le pacte est redoublé, l'image de, du, de l'hommage au diable et du pacte est, est redoublé. Hein, donc il y a deux images qui évoquent cette unique séquence narrative. Et dans l'une des images, donc la deuxième, on voit très clairement... Euh, Théophile, les mains jointes, et le diable qui lui prend les mains, et qui est une scène d'hommage. Hein, mmh. Qui est une scène, hein, c'est, euh, c'est la scène de la prise des mains euh, qui, qui témoigne de, du rituel de, 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 de cette, ce rituel de l'hommage qui est typiquement fait au de et qui bien sûr n'existe pas du tout dans la légende orientale telle qu'elle apparaît, telle qu'elle a été traduite. En revanche, donc là le, le, temp, le relief est daté du XIIe siècle, en revanche au XIIIe siècle, Rudebeuf, évoque le, euh, l'hommage que, euh, Théode- que Théophile fait euh, au diable. Et donc là, très clairement, on voit qu'il y a des codes visuels qui s'installent et qui, évidemment, qui vont modifier la légende telle qu'elle apparaît au XIIIe siècle, écrite euh, par Rudebeuf. Donc, oui, ça peut arriver, mais Théophile n'est pas... Enfin, même s'il apparaît dans beaucoup de serments à la Vierge, oui, ça peut arriver. Il peut y avoir effectivement une image, ou en tout cas une référence visuelle qui s'impose, mmh. ou une image mentale qui s'impose, et que forcément, au douzième, une rencontre avec le diable et signer un pacte, c'est faire du diable son suzerain. Mmh. Okay. So, just briefly, oui. for the, for the important <laughs> geographic text, it's complicated to imagine the presence of the oral tradition as something yes. leading. On the other hand, um, Cecil quoted this example of the Theophilus relief in, in Sujak, Sujak, where um, there is a scene of uh, a gesture which is not present into the Eastern text which arrive into the West, when you have uh, Theophilus doing like that with the hands, and the devil taking those hands, which is a typical feudal gesture from the West. Mm. And so in the Eastern region there is not, in the Western image there is this, just represented and yeah. the interesting aspect is not that it's like presented to the image only but that one century later this relief is 12th century and in 13th century this very let's say gesture is already present into the latin legend which is modified following mm-hmm. the image very probably so we can see how the eastern legend is transformed by the mm-hmm. 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 
Et le relief de, de Souillac, c'est la plus ancienne image monumentale de, de Théophile. Enfin, c'est qu'on a des images, une image dans un manuscrit. This one of the most ancient images of Theophilus. I can see. So, it's my <laughs> big, big... Small part. Yes, <laughs> little, <laughs> little. <laughs> Souillac. So, yeah. Je vous le remets quand même, c'est tellement beau. Beau lieu. Oui, beau lieu. Yeah, we went there. Ouais. Je sors parce que c'est très très lourd comme PowerPoint et je vais vous montrer ce yak. Ouais, ça, ça vaut le coup quand même. Ouais, ça. Mais voilà, mm -hmm. here we are. Mm -hmm. Ok, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oui, c'est une amazing construction. Et là, bah, vous avez donc le, les deux moments avec le diable qui sont redoublés. D'une part, le pacte, donc l'engagement écrit avec les deux mains, enfin les gestes sont formidables, avec les deux doigts posés sur l'écrit. Et puis, euh, de l'autre côté, euh, bah, justement, la représentation hein, du, de l'hommage vassalier, donc qui redouble. Et vous avez euh, ce pourquoi, en fait, Théophis, enfin, ce au nom de quoi Théophile se donne au diable, c'est-à-dire l'Église, parce qu'en fait dans l'histoire de Théophile, Théophile qui était l'administrateur des biens de l'Église, euh, est déchu de ses fonctions par un mauvais évêque, et donc il est tellement amer qu'il passe le pacte avec le diable pour récupérer sa place au sein de l'administration euh, et, et donc de l'Église. Hey, no other questions? So I think we can finish for it. Et juste pour vous montrer que les enfin que les vitesses c'est assez hallucinant et c'est le, le dernier exemple. Peut-être pas vous montrer les images, mais euh, on a le cas d'une un, autre légende qui est peinte et complètement modifiée. C'est une c'est la légende de Saint Gilles mm -hmm. qui a été peinte à saint aignan euh, sur cher à la collégiale. Vous connaissez mm -hmm. ces peintures? Je pense pas. Non. non. Et, et ces peintures, c'est assez incroyable parce que je vous raconte vite et puis après comme ça tu pourras mmh. <rire> traduire. Euh, c'est une légende qui raconte euh, comment, euh, com enfin, comment Saint Gilles est un saint thaumaturge et qui est utilisé comme saint patron des hôtels dieux. Hein, donc il a vraiment un lien avec la, la guérison, avec le corps. Et donc euh, le gros débat, au moment où la, la, la vie est rédigée, elle est rédigée au IXe siècle, le gros, gros débat porte sur la confession. Et donc on, on se bat, en fait, autour de la notion de confession, savoir si on doit se confesser directement à Dieu ou au prêtre. Quand au XIIe siècle, euh, on va peindre les images de Saint Gilles, évidemment, le débat sur la confession euh, n'a plus lieu d'être. Hein. Clairement, la confession, c'est au prêtre. Je oui. Avec la vie de Saint Gilles, qui uh, a été écrit dans le texte du 9e siècle, où il y avait... Construct, uh, existing the big debate about the confession. Do we have to be confessed directly to the God or to the priest? Mm -hmm. uh, when in the 12th century the images are depicted, uh, this debate is not existing anymore because the decision was like then, and do we have to, I mean, the Christian has to confess to the priest. Je suis. Et, et donc dans, dans la crypte, alors cette crypte euh, retraduit euh, dans une espèce de topographie hallucinante, tout, tous les lieux euh, de guérison ou exerce, enfin, dont dépendent, qui dépendent des chanoines de Saint-Aignan. Donc en fait, c'est des références à tous les lieux où ils, ils ont un rôle pour guérir les corps et les âmes. Et dans la liaison de Saint-Gilles, il représente toutes les actions thaumaturgiques du saint. Mm -hmm. Et à un moment donné, il glisse l'image que le saint est ordonné prêtre, qui rompt complètement la logique où on a une succession de, de, de miracles, pour ensuite passer à la scène miraculeuse de euh, la confession de Charlemagne. Oui, so, uh, the, 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 um, Gilles est un thaumaturgical saint, et il est représenté en faisant une série grande de miracles, comme like thaumaturge, so, like, il personnes qui sont sauvées par lui, dans le milieu de la narration, suddenly il y a une rupture. And there is a presentation of oh. ordination of Gilles as a priest. So he becomes priest and then right second following scene, which is the miracular confession of Charlemagne. 
So two scenes which have nothing to do with the legend, but they are added there in order, I mean, in order to emphasize this confessional dimension. Uh, this is the ordination, very deteriorated. Mm -hmm. And after, the, um, le miracle, donc, le miracle. Euh, voilà, qui fait que de toute façon, parce que la, la légende, le, le, le rédacteur de la, de la vie euh, expliquait qu'on n'avait pas besoin de se confesser à un prêtre, lui militait contre euh, la confession au prêtre, mmh. celui qui a rédigé la vie euh, au 9e siècle, et donc il expliquait qu'en fait on, on pouvait se confesser à Saint-Gilles, il n'y avait pas besoin de se confesser au prêtre. Et c'était l'objet de euh, cette image-là qui racontait que euh, pendant que le saint célébrait la messe, un ange vient déposer un petit papier euh, dans lequel le péché de, de Charlemagne est révélé. Mmh. Voilà. Et, euh, et donc, euh, la, la conclusion de la, de la vie du saint, c'était on n'a pas besoin de se confesser à un prêtre, il suffit de se confesser à Saint-Gilles pour être pardonné. Et donc, du coup, ça, c'est plus possible du tout au XIIe siècle, c'est des chanoines qui confessent et tout leur, tout leur, le décor de la crypte est tourné autour de la confession, évidemment, ils ne peuvent pas défendre cette idée-là. Donc, ils ajoutent l'image de l'ordination, qui n'a rien à voir avec les autres images qu'ils ont choisies, uniquement pour dire, oui, d'accord, Charlemagne, il se confie, enfin, le péché de Charlemagne n'est confié qu'à Saint-Gilles, mais de toute façon, Saint-Gilles, c'est un prêtre, donc ça annule l'équation. Um, you don't need to confess yourself to the priest. It is enough to like say pray to Saint Gilles, and it's like a confession. Mm -hmm. And it's represented into the text by this miracle when a small scene of Charlemagne arrives by an angel to Saint Gilles, and so <coughs> I'm sorry, it's true. the operation, <laughs> the, the operation is ready. But in this uh, 12th century frescoes, when the Canons need to confess persons, and they are like really very interested in the operation. Uh, Saint Gilles becomes priest, and so to confess sin, Saint Gilles means to confess it to the priest, and so it's like complete uh, re yeah, re scripture, re reinvention of the religion <coughs> in writing, yeah. in images. <laughs> okay, so. I think we should finish, and thank you, Cecile, because we finished the lecture here, and we will make a short break, I would say, and then we will go to the church. What time is it? It's five past four. Five past four, so we could be like... Ten uh, past four. Ten past four. Ten past four. So let's, let's, uh, let's meet at um, half past four mm -hmm. um, in front of the of the Westwerk. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs>